Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden and I'm the blogger behind The Country Chic Cottage. I'm thrilled to introduce to you today the Glowforge Spark, which is the smaller, more compact version of the Glowforge Aura and it is available for pre-sale on the Glowforge website starting March 5th, 2024. Now this video is sponsored by Glowforge, however all projects and opinions are my own. So we are going to talk about the Spark, what it is, kind of a little bit about how it compares with the Aura. I'm going to make my first project with it so you can check it out and hopefully I'll answer all the questions you have about the Spark today. So let's start off with the fact that the Spark is a smaller, more compact version of the Glowforge Aura. The Glowforge Aura come, came out several months ago. Because this is smaller and more compact, it is going to have like less capability. It is going to be slower than the Glowforge Aura. However, this machine is great for those of you that are looking to get started with a laser and want a lower price point than the Glowforge Aura, the Spark might be for you. If you are a crafter that is looking for a more portable Glowforge for like craft fairs or taking your laser other places, the Glowforge Spark I think is going to be your answer there. Or if you want another laser in addition to what you already have for smaller projects, and I really feel like this is great for those people that are in tight spaces. So if you need that compact laser, but you want it to be safe, so this is enclosed, we're gonna talk about safety here in a minute. Yes, this might just fit the bill. So before we dive into the Spark, take a look at what comes with it, set it up, I am going to talk about safety. When you are crafting with a laser, safety is always of utmost concern. Now I do have a full video on laser safety and I will link to that in the description below this video. But briefly, first of all, environmental conditions. The space you operate your laser, you want it between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit and no high humidity in the space. Then when you operate your laser, you always want to be close by when you operate it. That way you can monitor the cutting. Always keep a fire extinguisher and, pus and or fire blanket. I usually keep both on hand just in case any fires come up. Now there are safety systems within the Glowforge Spark and you can turn it off at any time by unplugging it. When the laser is cutting, you never want to look directly at a laser. So the Glowforge Spark has this cover on it. You can't operate it when the cover is open. So as long as the cover is in place, you can look through this orange cover at the laser cutting. So that's another safety aspect. Then when you are cutting with the laser, you always want to make sure you have proper ventilation. So with the Glowforge Spark, you'll either ventilate it out a window or it uses the same personal air filter as the Glowforge Aura. So that air filter is already in the market. If you already have one, you can use it with the Spark or you can purchase it separately for this machine. Then finally, briefly, I wanna mention material safety. I'm gonna go over materials you can and can't cut with this machine later on in this video. However, there are materials that are hazardous to cut with a laser. So always make sure that you are using laser ready or laser compatible materials anytime you're cutting with a laser, including the Glowforge Spark. So now let's jump right into the setup, look at what comes with the machine and set it up. Let's first take a look at what comes with the Glowforge Spark. So you'll unbox it and several things are inside the Spark itself and underneath it you will have another package. So be sure to look underneath it and not miss this package here. It contains a piece of proof grade material that you can use on your machine for the first time as well as a honeycomb tray that we will be installing. Then inside, first of all, you have the tube that connects either to the outdoors or to your personal air filter. Inside of that, you have the power cord. Then we'll remove this box. There's some packaging material back here in the back and be careful at this stage, this is the laser module itself. So I'm gonna remove this and pull this out. And then I'm going to remove all of this packaging material. The laser module just sits on this portion here with some magnets. So just line the magnets up and it just snaps into place. And then we want to remove any and all packaging material from the inside of this machine. Once all that's removed, you can push this bar back and install your honeycomb tray right on the inside. And now, my Glowforge Spark is ready to go. You can turn your machine around to the back and add the tube for the air filter. So it is always important to maintain proper ventilation when operating a laser. 
So you want to make sure that this end of the tube is on the machine tightly. The opposite end of this tube, you will either connect to the Glowforce personal air filter or put this out the window. Either way, you need proper ventilation anytime you operate your laser. On this side is where you will put your power cord. So one end of the power cord just goes into this area here. And then we can plug the other end into the wall and finish the setup of the Glowforge Spark. At this stage, you'll need your computer. You'll head to setup.glowforge.com and you may be prompted to download some setup software. That will put a program called Glowforge Wi-Fi Setup on your computer, and you can go ahead and follow the steps from there. That will include plugging the Glowforge Spark in. You plug it in to turn it on and unplug it to turn it off. Your Glowforge Spark is considered a printer. So you will connect it to Wi-Fi, then use that Wi-Fi to connect to your computer. Once you connect the Spark to your Wi-Fi, then it's ready to go. The application will direct you to app.glowforge.com and that is where you actually use your designs. On app.glowforge.com, you should in the right-hand corner be able to pull down your list of printers. You can see that I have both the Glowforge Aura, which is offline, and the Glowforge Spark, which is now connected and ready to be printed to. Now I do have other videos on uploading your own designs to your Glowforge and different videos like that and I will link to some of those in the description below this one. So I won't go into a ton of detail about the app itself, but we do want to use this machine to cut something. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my Glowforge Spark to the personal air filter. That's the way I choose to use it for safety reasons. Whichever way you vent, be sure to do that at this point before you send any prints to the Spark itself. You saw me connect one end of the hose to the back of the spark. The other end of the hose I am going to put on my personal air filter. There's a hole at the top and you will just connect that in the same manner by just pushing it on. You do want to make sure it's secure all the way around. Then the air filter itself also needs to be plugged up. These two connect via Bluetooth connection so anytime that the Glowforge starts up and starts to cut the air filter will automatically turn on. So we want to be sure to connect these two at this time. Once you plug this in, these two should automatically sync if they are both on. So be sure that the spark is on as well as the air filter. I do still have the air filter connected. It is just in the floor out of the shot. Just wanted to note that. I am going to use proof grade material for this initial cut, so my first project. Let's talk a little bit about the materials you can use in the Glowforge Spark. You can use a wide variety of materials, however, proof grade materials are a great way to get started. So Glowforge proof grade materials are tested with your Glowforge. So the settings are proven and they work great. Plus it comes with masking already applied to both sides to prevent burning and charring marks. Each one of the proof grade materials also comes with a QR code in the corner. So when I add it to the Glowforge Spark, you're gonna see it on the screen and you're gonna see that it automatically scans this QR code so it knows exactly what material settings I need to use for cutting, engraving, and scoring because the Glowforge Spark can do all three. The great thing about proof grade materials is that you could use any materials that are marked for Glowforge Aura with your Glowforge Spark. So that includes wood, leather, there are even some products like iron-on that can be used with a laser. When you use proof grade materials, you know that those materials are laser compatible. When we talk about safety and any laser machine, you always need to be sure that the materials you're putting inside of your machine are laser compatible. That means that they need to be safe for cutting with a laser. There are some materials that it is toxic to cut them with your laser and you always wanna avoid those. So you wanna make sure that whatever you're putting inside the spark is safe to cut with a laser. For now, I'm gonna use this sheet of proof grade material and it is light cherry plywood, and we are gonna make some coasters. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to add this material. It is a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of proof grade material. Now, although I can't cut that size with the Glowforge Spark, this material will fit inside here, and then I can use the app to locate the material and make sure it cuts out of the material itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift the lid at this point, and then I'm gonna add the proof grade material inside. You just want to drop it inside on top of that honeycomb tray. Then you can close the lid and we are ready to use this machine for a quick project. So let's take a look right in the app at how to get access those projects. So I'm going to use a design that's already in Glowforge. 
They have several designs. Several of those are even for free when you either have a premium subscription or when you first get your Glowforge Spark, you'll get some sample projects. So I might pick one of those freebies to get started just to make it simple. So I'm gonna pick these gorgeous Monstera Lake coasters. Up here in the corner, you can see that I have my Glowforge Spark picked and it tells me that the air filter is connected. So remember I said it did it automatically. You do wanna check up here, make sure that the air filter is connected and everything says ready. So the first thing I'm noticing about this design, it's the same unknown material. If you look on the screen, it can't quite read that QR code. So what I'm gonna do is lift the lid, sort of move that material a little bit, shut the lid back down. The screen will refresh and hopefully that QR code can be read. Now that it sees the QR code, you can see it says light cherry plywood in the corner. And then down through here, I have three layers. What I'm going to do is to score this layer and as I hover over each one you can see it change on the screen so I'm going to score those leaf lines I'm going to engrave the holes and I did change that from a cut and then I'm going to cut the outside edge for each of these if I wanted to change it click where it says engrave and you can change it across the top so I could change that to a cut line instead you will see that for instance this cut it says it's a proof grade cut because we're using proof grade material if you don't use proof grade material, you will have to set your own custom setting. A good source for that is the Glowforge community where tons of people are testing out various materials and it often gives you a good starting point. Then for this score, you'll see there's draft and for engrave, there's a few different options. Draft graphic, SD graphic, or HD graphic. I'm gonna go ahead and choose HD graphic. So I chose this project specifically because it has all three types of cuts. That way at the end of this, you can see what all three of these do and pick the appropriate type of cut when you're using your Glowforge machine. And now I can pick all of these and I can resize them if I wanted to. So I can change the size, I can pick them, I can move them around on the material. There is a camera inside of the Glowforge Spark, so you are seeing exactly what is inside of the machine. I am locating this exactly where I want it on this material. Now the Glowforge can cut over the sticker on the proof grade material, so there is no harm in overlapping that sticker on this material. Now for me, everything looks great with this design. I am ready to print it. I am ready to send this to my Glowforge Spark to be cut, engraved, and scored. So I'm gonna go ahead and click print. Once you click print, things are gonna get loud. So the air filter is going to start up, the machine is going to start making some noises. And what it's doing at this point is it's focusing on my material. So that auto focus with the camera inside the Glowforge Spark is focusing on the material itself. Next step, it's going to verify the alignment, calibrate the machine, just basically getting ready to make your design. Now, once it's ready to print, this light will start flashing on the button and you would press it to start your cut. However, I want you to take note of something. For four coasters, it is going to take one hour and 27 minutes for the Glowforge Spark to cut, engrave, and score these. Now that is a very long time. And for safety reasons, whenever your laser is cutting, you need to stay by it. Now, with the Glowforge Spark, it is a diode laser, and it is a very low wattage. So it is fairly slow when making projects. So for this project, I'm gonna back out of it and I'm just gonna make one coaster. I did want you to see what a set of four coasters would look like and how long that would take. So I can just cancel this print and then I can erase the co all of the coasters except for one. So now I'm making one coaster, one cut, one engrave, one score. Now we're gonna run through the process again and see how long this one will take to print. So now you can see on the screen that this one's gonna take 21, 21 and a half minutes approximately to cut, engrave, and score. I'm okay with that. I'm ready to make this project. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this flashing button to get this started. So you just press the button. Again, you hear that air filter, you hear everything start up, and the machine will begin to operate. So let's take a look at the machine doing its job.
Once the cut is done, you will want to wait for everything to cool down, and it will tell you that on the screen of the Glowforge app. Wait until it says print done, then lift the lid, and you are ready to remove your design. So we're just gonna go ahead and lift this up, and as you can see, everything cut great. So now let's take a look at this finished project and remove the masking. So here's the finished piece out of the laser, completely cut. So you have a cut on the round the outside edge, the engrave is these larger pieces, and the score is gonna be these lines. This does have a masking on it, so you may be able to see some burnt edges here. There's an adhesive sheet on both sides because this was proof grade material, and we do need to remove that. You can just kind of take your Gorilla Tape and stick it to the surface on a portion of it and peel that back. And you can see some of it stuck and some of it didn't. I'm gonna push that back down and now I'm getting all those little pieces. This one will be a little bit trickier because it has a bunch of small pieces, but once you start peeling this back, you can generally peel it back as just one piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the masking, and you do need to do this on both sides. So this is the front, has the engraving and the scoring. I will also remove the masking from the back. So here's our piece of cherry plywood complete with the masking removed from the front and the back. So you can see the back is just cut. On the front, you can start to see the differences between the different types. Around the edge, of course, is cut through. In the middle, you have score with the lines, and then all these holes in the monstera leaf are actually engraved. So you can see that those are much deeper than the score lines. So this gives you a variety of options with your projects and the Glowforge Spark. So whether you want the cut, the engrave, or the score would depend on the type of project that you're making and the look you want. You will need to do some cleaning tasks on the Glowforge Spark. First of all, you can remove this tray. You can use like a small handheld vacuum to vacuum out any small bits. You will get small bits a lot of times when you cut small pieces. They might fall through the honeycomb. You may notice some brown on the tray after you cut something. I tend to clean this depending on how often I use it, but at least after two to three uses, I go ahead and clean the tray itself. And I'm just using like a Lysol wipe and wiping everything down, and then I allow it to dry. After about 10 hours of printing these rails here, I would clean those with a wipe. And the camera itself, you can clean it with a lens wipe if you ever notice any dirt or debris. So now let's do a very quick kind of aura comparison. What do both of these machines, like what are the sizes? How do they compare with each other? So the Glowforge Spark is smaller than the Aura, and let's take a look at the two side by side. So on the table I have the Glowforge Aura, and I'm just going to kind of hover the Spark over the top here so we can kind of check out the size differences. So you can see that the Spark itself is smaller than the Glowforge Aura. The length here is close to the same. However, the width, and let me put the spark all the way to the back. The width is significantly different. However, the height is roughly the same. The spark is very lightweight and it is a more convenient size for transportation. This is the Glowforge Aura and just to illustrate the differences, here is a piece of 12 by 12 inch proof grade material inside of the Aura. Then here I am taking that exact same piece of material and putting it inside the spark. This really demonstrates just how much smaller the Spark is than the Glowforge Aura. Now this still is a six watt diode laser, just like the Aura. However, this one is smaller, it is slower. In a lot of respects, it is less capable than the Glowforge Aura. So let's talk max sizes. For both the Aura and the Spark, for cutting a quarter inch thick is gonna be your maximum and for engraving three quarter inch thick is gonna be your maximum. Now with the Spark, you are not going to have as large of a material size. So for cutting, it's gonna be about nine inches by 12 inches will be your maximum size. For engraving, you can go a little bit thicker and let's see why. So I've installed the honeycomb tray and I would put any materials I wanna cut on top of that. This is for thin materials. You can engrave thicker materials with this machine. So if I was to remove this tray, I could put thicker materials down inside here. However, you never want to hit the laser head on the material, so you always want to watch the thickness and make sure you're staying within the limits. 
So for that engraving, you can go up to three quarters of an inch thick, but it is going to fall within about a nine by 12 inch size because it has to fit down in that well inside of the Glowforge Spark. Now with the Aura, the Aura has what is called a pass-through tray. This Glowforge Spark does not have one. Because the Aura has the pass-through tray, the material sizes can be larger. So say for engraving, for instance, on the Aura, it can only be 12 by 12 because it needs to sit down in that same type of well that's on the Spark. However, with cutting and the Glowforge Aura, it can be 12 inches by very, very long because you have that pass-through tray and you can pass the material through the laser. The Spark does not have any pass-through tray, so you are restricted to what fits inside of this enclosure. The materials you can cut are the same for both the Spark and the Aura. And I am going to briefly list those, so kind of materials you can cut and materials you can't cut. I have a much more comprehensive list of materials that you never want to cut with a laser on my laser safety video, and I will drop that in the description below this video. You can literally cut hundreds of materials with the Glowforge Spark. Some of those materials include plywood, hardwood, wood veneer, leather, acrylics, iron-on, paper, fabric, stickers. There are many, many materials that you can cut with the Glowforge Spark. And when we're looking at these cut materials, generally you can cut and also engrave them. So there's different cut types you can do on those materials. There are other materials that you can only engrave with the Glowforge Spark. And those would be like very thick woods, slate, ceramic, metal, and so much more. Now when we're talking about things you can't cut with the Glowforge Spark, we're talking about clear acrylic, and actually clear and blue and light colors can be an issue with a dial laser like the Glowforge Spark. So do be aware of that when you're cutting anything clear or of a light color. You don't wanna cut leather that contains chromium, PTFE or Teflon, PVC-based materials, and this is a lot of your iron-on and vinyl type materials, so you wanna be careful there. PVB-based materials, beryllium oxide. However, you always want to make sure that your materials are laser compatible or laser safe. Now, the Glowforge Spark does have that camera, and you saw it in use when I was doing my cuts. The Glowforge Aura has that as well. So it does a few things. It automatically measures your material. You can also see your material on the screen so you can locate your cuts. The other thing that camera can do, which is really exciting, you can put something in it like a picture, a recipe, something handwritten or hand-drawn, and that camera will actually take an image of whatever you put inside, and then you can trace it right in that Glowforge app. And so you can use those to actually make your engraving or your cut projects. So that is a great way to use your Glowforge machine in a very unique way. So now all of that being said, I mentioned that the Glowforge Spark was more affordable. Just how affordable is it? So the Glowforge Spark with the pre-order price will only be $5.99. And it is only on the Glowforge website right now. So as of March 5th, 2024, when the pre-order goes live on the Glowforge website, it will be $5.99. So it is an amazing price. Now it will be at other retailers later and the retail price is going to be $6.99. So you can actually save money if you go ahead and do that pre-order. So if you're interested in the Spark and you're like, this is the machine for me, then you might wanna grab it at that pre-order price. And I will link to that in the description below this video so you can head there to get on that pre-order list and be one of the first ones to get your hands on the Glowforge Spark. Now let's talk about if you need this machine or not. So first of all, I found this machine very easy to use. So it's easy to set up and very easy to use. I feel like most of the Glowforge machines are that way so you really can't go wrong. Again, very easy machine to use. I love how compact this is. Now the Aura is only slightly larger, but it does make it a lot more bulky to move. This is a very good size for moving by yourself. And it is very, very lightweight, which I love as well. I feel like if you were looking for a beginner laser at a budget price, the Glowforge Spark is a great option to start with. It is also a great option if you just want that compact size, live in a small home, and it is also a great option for those that want a portable laser. I see a lot of portable lasers on the market and they don't have the enclosure. Talked about safety a little bit and for me that is very important. So I like a laser that has a full enclosure primarily for safety reasons. I don't want anyone to be able to reach in and touch the laser. I don't want anyone to be able to look at the laser and harm their eyes. I want something to trap the fumes and ventilate well. I want a laser that is completely enclosed and the Glowforge Spark does that for me. 
but in a compact size. So I feel like if you're looking for that compact laser that also has all the safety features that for me are critical, then the Glowforge Spark is a very great option. So it might just be something that is a great option for you. So whether you're adding this to your wish list for a future purchase or you are sold right now and going to pre-order on the Glowforge website, I really hope this video helps you make that decision. So if you have any questions about the Glowforge Spark, I want you to ask those in the comment section below. I can answer them there or I can answer them in a future video. So I'm gonna have more video content on the Glowforge Spark and I wanna answer your questions. So be sure to drop down and ask all those questions that you have below. And then for now, if this video helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week and we'll have more Glowforge Spark content that you don't wanna miss. So thank you all so much for joining me. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.